Hey class, this, this is Mr. Roberts at Shasta High School. I'm sitting here in room 309, and I'm about to start going over the study team test for chapter two. Uh, this is a new recording. I think this test was used in the past though, but I'm gonna go through it again this year. So let's start. Uh, first question asks us to uh, read the information about several lines. If there is enough information, circle quote, enough info. Draw a graph and find a rule. If there's not an infinite, infinite, blah, 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 enough information, tell what you would need to find the rule. So in this first one, um, I'm given, I'm giving, I'm given an x-intercept, and I'm given a slope. So because of that, I would say that's a point, and it is a, a slope. So I think that's enough information. So if I was going to, my, it says the x-intercept is at four so that means it's the point four comma zero so this is a point that's known on the graph right uh, x is four y is zero and it says that the slope is negative one half that means down one over two this would be a point down one over two down one over two or i could go the other direction right i could go um, up one and back two up one back two. Oh, that's cool because at that point i lit legit just figured out the y intercept up one back two so I can see that my y-intercept is occurring right here when uh, x is clearly 0, but y is 2. So because I know my y-intercept, hmm, that means I can write the equation of this line. The equation or rule of this line is y is equal to, um, let's see, negative 1 half is my slope times x plus a y-intercept at the point 2 when y is 2. All right, moving on to our next problem. It says, line B passes through the point 2, 5. Okay, or I'm sorry, 2, negative 5. So I've got x is 2, y is negative 5. x is 2, y is negative 5. The problem that I'm having is if that's all I know, but I can come over here and I got a point, right? But the thing is, is any, any line that goes through that point would satisfy everything I know because I don't have any information about the, the growth of that line, the slope. So I would say that there is not enough info here. And I would need, for example, um, I could say another point. I don't, I don't know why I'm spelling another with an H. Another point would be nice. Well, I don't even need that. I could also just have, if they told me the slope, that would be great. I, or I could, if I was given... Let's see, with that point and a, a y-intercept, that would be enough, but that would be the same as given another point. So I would need another point or something equivalent to another point and a slope to do it. And I forgot to circle up here. This was enough information uh, for that one. So I can't graph that one. So let's move on to page two. It says line P, line C rather, passes through the origin. Oh, and it has a slope of two thirds. Okay, origin, that's nice. If it's the, it goes through the origin, that's the origin, right? It's the point where x is 0 and y is 0. And it says I have a slope of 2 thirds, so that means it's up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, up 2 over, there we go, right? That's the line. Um, can grab the ruler, like line up the ruler, and I can draw the line. So this is a, um, this is a fair representation of that line. Um, then, let's see. Okay, so because it's going through the origin, my y-intercept is zero. So the equation of this line would just be y equals two-thirds x. And then I could say plus zero if I wanted to, but that's optional. So I could just leave it as y equals two-thirds x. There is enough information there, so let's go on to part D. Part D says line D passes through, and then I'm given two points here. Okay, well, if I'm given two points, that is enough information, right? Two points is enough to determine the slope uh, and the, the y-intercept. So let's plot the two points we have. One of the points uh, we're told lives where um, x is negative 5. Let's see, negative 5, and y is negative 3. So this is one of my points. And the other point is where x is 7, 5, 6, 7, and then um, at negative negative five okay so seven negative five this is the other point okay so i can see that my my slope is negative it's decreasing right 
it's going down and it looks something like this and if i kind of like kind of count it it looks like it's down one over one two three four five see i don't trust myself here up one back one two three four five see that looks like it's down six so I don't want to do this based on the graph, right? I, I'm not exactly sure I can cleanly read that. I, I think maybe I did a bad job drawing that too. So I am going to use my calculator to quickly take a look at the slope. So let me grab the cat. There it is. Oh, look at you. What a nice little calculator. And uh, to find the slope, right, I'm going to go ahead and say, let me grab a fraction template. So oops, grab a, mm, where's that at? Fraction template. Got it. And in the numerator, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, I need the difference in my y's. Let me write this down. So the difference in my y's, I should have a, I'll do a negative 3 minus negative 5. And then my denominator, my, I need difference in x's. So I'm going to go negative 5, and then I'll go minus 7. So I wrote exactly uh, what I was given here, right? I can see the, I use this for y and this for y. And then I use this for x and this for x. So I've got negative 3 minus negative 5. Yeah, that's great. Let's go ahead and type that in there. So uh, in my numerator, I have a negative, negative 3. I'm going to subtract negative 5. And in the denominator, I just have negative 5 and minus the number 7. And I get negative 1, 6. So the slope of my line is my slope of the line is m equals negative one six so it's down one over six units down one over six let me let me erase that line and take a look at this and see if i can do this better so if i go down one and over one two three four five six right here and then down one over one two three four five oh yeah for sure it's definitely negative one six down one over six and down 2 over 12, right? So that's my, that's my slope. So I know the slope ratio. Now we've talked about how do you set out to find the y-intercept. The thing about the y-intercept is you can see it is not it is not a nice number, right? And it is not a nice number. So it's somewhere, it, 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 it kind of looks like it's nice, right? It's kind of like, uh, it's very, very close to the number negative four, but it's not, I would not bet on that, right? I don't think that's great evidence. So a graph is great sometimes, but as we know, down on the farm, this is a case where we've got the weight of the chicken at day nine, and we know that the rate at which the chicken's growing or the baby chick. So what do we do? Well, we're going to figure out the, the uh, equation that models the growth of the chicken. There's no chicken here. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to write a reminder to myself y equals mx plus b. This can be used to model any line with the exception of vertical lines, right? And let's just arbitrarily select one of our points. I'm going to select this point here, the one below, and I'm going to write down that y is negative 5. So if you look at the point I boxed, this point right here, with the smiley face next to it, y is negative 5 at that point. And we also know that we found our slope m was negative 1 sixth and x is the number 7. So when I give this function 7, it should give me negative 5. The only thing that I don't know here is I don't know my y-intercept b, and that's why this is nice, because it's going to allow me to figure out what b is. Exactly. So on the right-hand side, I'll rewrite this as going to be minus 7 sixths, mm -hmm. and uh, plus b, and then over here I've got a negative 5. So I'm looking at, I need to add 7, 6 to each side. So negative 5 plus 7, 6 is what B is. All right, so I'm ready. I am ready, and I'm going to uh, check it out and use my calculator. So I'll just come in here and I'll say um, negative 5 plus 7 fraction 6. There we go. And I get, ba -ba -da -ba, I get that B is negative 23 over 6. B is negative 23 over 6. What's nice is I now know, hmm, I now know the equation of this line. I kind of ran out of room here. So what I'll do is I'll write the equation here. I believe this equation is y is equal to negative 1 6th 
times x minus 23 sixths. That's the equation of the line that I'm looking at there. Now, I have powerful tools, I think, for checking if this is correct. And I discussed this on class last Friday. Let's take a quick look here. I'm going to grab table, and I'm going to enter that function, right? I'm going to say y is negative 1 sixths. I'm going to leave the fraction and write the variable x. And I'm going to say minus 23 at the denominator of 6. Great. When I press enter, it says, okay, uh, I'm going to come down here to ask. I like it when it, it asks me. And now I'm in a situation where I can see if my equation is giving me the right thing. So, for example, I can see up here if I give this equation the number negative 5, right, if I give it negative 5, it should give me negative 3 back. Well, let me give it negative 5. And when I do, yeah, it gave me negative 3. If I give the equation the number 7, right, if I give it 7, it should give me negative 5, and it does. So it checked for both of those points, so I'm really confident that this is the equation exactly, right? Another thing that I know is true because it's the y-intercept, if I give this equation 0, right, if I give it x is 0, it should tell me negative 23 sixths. And it does. Oh, yes, it does. All right, so that's the answer for uh, D. Let's move on to question two. Question two says, given the input, identify the output for each function. Okay, so I'm giving this thing three. Let's see, if I give this the value of three, I'm going to be looking at five times three plus three. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have two times three minus 3. Well, 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 plus 3 is 18 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I have 2 times 3, which is 6, and 6 minus 3 is 3. So I'm looking at 18 over 3, which I believe is 6. So if I give um, that particular function the value of 3, I should get an answer back of uh, 6. So we can write this a lot of different ways, but definitely one way um, we can do is we can write um, we can write that f of three is six. When you give it three, it gives you six. Uh, the next question similar, right? It says, hey, you got to be careful here, right? I always stress using these parentheses. This says you're going to take x and you're going to square what x is, plus you're going to take four and you're going to multiply that by x. Right, 4, and then you're going to multiply it by x, and then you're going to add a 5. Now, I set this up like this, right? I know that this is what the function f of x is, and I'm going to be placing the number negative 3 in that. So negative 3 lands here, and negative 3 lands here. So what do I have? Mm, negative 3 times negative 3 is going to be the number 9, plus um, 4 times negative 3 is going to be the number negative 3. 12, so I'll be subtracting 12, and then plus the number 5. So I'm looking at 9 minus 12, 9 minus 12, um, and then plus 5. Oh, let's use a calculator. Why not? Uh, where'd that calculator go? There it is. So I'm going to hit clear, and I'm going to go, oh, let me go, how do I do second quit? Clear? Oh, geez, there, there we go. I'm just going to hit... Uh, 9 minus the number 12, or I could say plus negative 12, but I'm subtracting. And then plus a 5 is 2. Is that right? 15. 15 minus... That feels wrong. 9 minus 12. Oh, no, that's, that's 14. Yeah, 14 minus 12 is 2. That's correct. So when I give the function f the value of negative 3, this will return to me the value of 2. All right, let's move on to the next page. The next page is backwards. You see it, right? It's it's a very similar thing, but this time, this time what's happening is instead of being, um, instead of knowing what we're putting into the function, we're asking what do you put into the function to get these outputs. So this one says, hey, what value of x would you give that function to get an output of 42? And I have to say, the, the, for me, the nicest way to answer that question is to say, well, let's just consider. Here's the function, 4 times the quantity, 2x minus 5 plus 6. And I want that to become 42, right? I want that 
expression. I want that that left half there. I want the the thing that represents the half to be 42. So I just set 4 times the quantity of 2x minus 5 plus 6 equal to 42. Okay. Now what am I going to do? Well, probably what I'm going to do, let me just go back to the bigger screen here. I'm going to like subtract 6 from each side. So if I take away 6 from the number 42, that's going to give me the number what? Mm -hmm. 6 minus 42 is like... 11, let's just write this. I'll just I'll just write this. So I'll just say this is going to become... And actually, I'll distribute this to... I'll say 4 times 2x is 8x minus 20 uh, equals 42 minus 6. So you see what I've done. Right? You see what I've done. I've distributed the 4, and I've taken away 6 from both sides. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to write 8x equals 42 minus 6 plus 20. I just added 20 to both sides. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Roberts, you're not doing any arithmetic. I know, that's because I'm terrified of it. And that's okay because I can save the arithmetic for the end. I, the last thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 8. And when I do that, I'm going to get on the left-hand side, x. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to get what? 42 minus 6 plus 20. And all of that is to be divided by the number 8. Okay, so now what are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to chicken out and I'm going to grab my calculator. So let me clear the screen here. And I'm just going to go, I have a numerator. And in the numerator, I have got 42 minus 6 uh, plus the number 20. Hmm, 42 minus 6. I'm, I'm trying to do a little mental math and see. that That's going to be 62 minus 6. Hmm, it's 30, 36. And then in the denominator, I'm going to, to divide by 8. Can I get hmm, 7? 62, that's, that's 58. Hmm. Is that right? Is that correct? Is, is it a 7? Let's go back over here and try this. So if I put 7 into this thing, right, that's going to become, if a 7 goes in, this is going to become 2 times 7, which is 14. And 14 minus 5 is, what, 9? And then 4 times 9 is 36. I don't think I've had, I don't think I have the right answer here. Let, let me... Let me plug this into the calculator and check. I'm, I think I could be wrong. Oh, no, I'm, I'm clearly overacting because if I take 4 times 2 times, um, what did I say I thought my answer was? 2 times 7. And then if I uh, subtract 5 from that, and then if I add 6 to that result, I do get 42. Okay. Okay, it's right. This is correct. When I plug the number, what is it? I said 7. When I plug 7 in, right, this here, x equals 7 right here. When I plug, when I, x is 7. When I plug 7 into the function, it definitely becomes 42. That was scary. Um, this thing over here, I talked to a couple groups today. And actually, both of these questions are kind of precursors to things that will be coming up soon. We're going to get really good at this. Right now, we're kind of like struggling. Um, when I look at this, this says, look, you take the square root of something. And when you take the square root of that thing, you need to get an answer of 8. Well, I could ask you a series of questions saying, hey, what do you take the square root of if you want to get an answer of 5? What do you take the square root of if you want to get an answer of 9? You know, well, the square root of 25 would give me 5. The square root of 81 would give me 9. What do I take the square root of if I want to get an answer of 8? Well, if that answer, that would be that would be 64, right? The square root of 64 is 8. 8 times 8 is 64. So what I'm what I'm looking at here is I need this thing, right? What thing? I need this thing to be exactly equal to 64. So if I kind of look inside of that radical and I think about it, I'm what I'm saying is I'm saying, hey, 2x plus 12 must be 64. It must be 64. And if it is 64, then this should work. So what do I do now? Well, I'll take 64, 64, and I will subtract 12. Okay. 
And now that I got that, that's 52. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to divide it by 2. And I think that when x is 26, this should work as planned, right? It should work as planned. Does it? Let's check. So if I go the square root of 2 times 26 plus the whopping 12, right? That should give me, mm -hmm, and it does, right? It gives me exactly 8. So when x is the number 26, my output is uh, the number 8. All right, let's move on to simplifying four expressions here. Let's see how quickly we can do these with um, some understanding. I don't, I don't need the calculator for this. Um, so the first thing I have is, hmm, wow. So I am squaring this, right? So all of that's going to get squared. So that means that that thing becomes... 8 times 8 is 64 x to the 4th power, y to the 4th power. Convincing yourself that's correct is important, right? I'm squaring 8. 8 times 8 is 64. I'm squaring x squared. That's x squared, x squared, which is x to the 4th. And same thing with y squared. Now, I'm multiplying that by something. Um, it turns out that 2 to the negative 2nd power, and I can, I can verify this on my friend, uh, the calculator, Ooh, let's grab this here. If I go 2 raised to the negative second power, that's going to be exactly 1 fourth. Is it? Yeah, that's 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. So since that's 1 fourth, right, we can write, oh, that's just the number 1 fourth. And then I've got an x squared and a y squared. So let's take a look at this. Uh, 64 times 1 fourth, well, that's half of 64, which is 32. And half of that is 16. So part of my answer is the number 16. How many factors of x do I have? Well, I've got exactly four factors and two more. I've got six factors of x, right? Six factors of x. How many factors of y do I have? There's four of them right here. And two more factors. Oh, that's, that's six factors of y. So my final answer will be 16 times x to the sixth times y to the sixth power. That's fun. Let's move over to part B. Oh, B, look it. I'm thinking there's got to be a giant 1 here. So if I look at the number 16, I know that that's 4 times a 4. And the number 4 is already in the denominator. And then I can see I've got x cubed and x to the 4th. And the top. I'm going to rewrite, uh, I'm going to leave x cubed alone. But I'm going to break up x to the 4th. I'm going to rewrite it as x to the 3rd times another factor of x. So... It's always great once you're asserting something like this to look at it and make sure that what you claim is true. And yeah, 4 times 4 is 16. That numerator is definitely 16x to the 3rd. And x to the 3rd times another x is x to the 4th. So definitely the numerator matches the numerator, the denominator, the denominator. The advantage is now I can clearly see there's this value of giant, there's this giant 1, right? I've got 4x cubed over 4x cubed. That's the number 1. So what am I left with for my answer? Well, in my numerator, I've got the number 4. And in the denominator, there is an x. So this simplifies to simply oops, to simply 4 uh, over x. Let's go to part C. Here it is. Oh, part C, I have three factors of 4x squared. If I want, I could expand this, right? I can write 4x squared times another 4x squared times another 4x squared. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4, it's 64, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm off screen grabbing a calculator, and I'm literally not ashamed to say 16 times 4. Yeah, it is 64. So I have uh, 64, and then how many factors of x? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, x to the sixth power. So one thing I can consider, I can I can look at this as a slightly a slightly different way, right? If I, I can also look at this as look, I'm raising there's there's two collections of things here, right? There's four, and I should have three factors of that four. And then I have x squared and I should have three groups of that, which is going to make the x to the six. So it it, of, it gets to the same answer either way. The answer is 64x to the sixth power. And then the last one, ooh one thing's for sure, this pen is too, oh, that's, that's not, that's, hmm. 
One thing's for sure is there is clearly a value of one here, right? This a is not being raised to the third power and it's not being raised to the negative fifth power. There's no parentheses there. So I've got an a over a, which makes a giant one. Um, the other thing that I have here is, and we're going to be talking about this more, if I want to get rid of this negative exponent, I can choose to multiply this by b to the positive fifth times b to the positive fifth, right? This is kind of the opposite of noticing the giant one that I can bring out. I can also bring a giant one to the problem. And when I do that, what's nice is in the denominator, I've just created, right? And that's why I picked this. I've created b to the zero power, right? I've created b to the zero power of my denominator, which is the number one. Really? Yeah, it is. That's what's in the denominator. In the numerator, I have b to the eighth power, right? b to the eighth power. And it's because it's being divided by one, my final answer will just be b raised to the eighth power. That's that. That's that problem. Moving on. Um, solve the following equations. Okay. Okay, let's rewrite using the distributive property. So we're going to go 2x plus 1 plus 4x um, minus 8 equals 11. Mm, I don't think I've messed up yet. Um, let's see, four, 2x and 4x is going to be 6 of them. So 6 times x minus 7 equals 11. Hmm. Okay. Add 7 to each side. 6 times x equals 18. I added 7 to both sides. And now divide both sides by 6. x is 18 divided by 6 is 3. x is the number 3. Let's move to this problem. Okay. Uh, again, I'll rewrite the right-hand side using the simplest form of the distributive property. Nice. Here I've got 4x plus 10. I'm going to take away 4x from each side. So 10 is equal to 2x minus 30. What did I do? I took away 4x's from each side. Now I'm going to add 30 to both sides, so I get that 40 is 2x. And finally, I'm going to divide by 2, 20 is what x is, x is 20. Great. x is 20, that's my answer for, um, is that b? It's going to c, oh, c, okay. Okay, I like this c. Um, this is something that will come up more and more. Um, one of the ways that I like to process this, let me get rid of this C here. That's kind of bothering me. That's there. One of the ways I like to process this is I like to get rid of fractions. And I know that if I have equal things, I can multiply both sides by equal things to get rid of the fractions. Okay, what's beautiful about that, right? I just decided to multiply both sides by what I saw in the denominator. So I'm multiplying both sides by a factor of four and by a factor of seven. What's nice is on the left-hand side, I can see that I've got a factor of 4 in the numerator and a factor of 4 in the denominator. And as we always know, you know, because they're factors, that's, that's one, that's a giant one, so that can be gone. It's gone. I'm not even, I don't even see that anymore. It's not even there. Uh, I also, on the right-hand side, I've got a factor of 7 in the numerator and a factor of 7 also in the denominator. So 7 over 7 is 1. That's gone as well. So what do I have? Well, on the left-hand side, I have to multiply by the 7. So I've got this 7. I need to multiply by 2x plus 1. I need to multiply that whole side by 7. And over on the right-hand side, I have 4x. What's stunning about that is I just got rid of the fractions, right? They're not there. There's other ways we can see this, and I, I'd be happy to show you simpler ways, but I like to think about destroying fractions. Uh, let's distribute the 7 here, so this becomes 14x plus 7 equals 4x. I'll take away, I'm going to take away 14x from each side. That's going to give me 7 is equal to negative 10x. I subtracted 14x from each side. And then finally, uh, 7 
over negative 10 is what x is. I divided both sides by by negative 10. So x is x is negative 7 tenths. Um, the, the last problem here, d, is similar. I will show you this, though, another way that you can think about these. So um, you've probably heard this phrase before. This is a proportion. And because this is a proportion, it turns out that things called cross products, I don't even like saying that. It makes me shudder. Um, they're, they're equal to each other. What do I mean by that? I have no idea. I don't know. I'm afraid that, that I even said that. Let's not do that. I'm just going to do this. I believe that if I multiply both sides by 8, that'll destroy all the fractions, right? If I look over here, this is 8 over, hmm, I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted a nice pen, green. I got 8 over 8, which is a giant 1. So on this side, now I just have 2x. On the other side, I've got, okay, if I look at this, it's not very clear what the giant 1 is, but I do see that this 8, is the same thing as uh, 4 times 2. So I could say that 8 is 4 times 2. And now I, I can see here that I do have this 1 in terms of 4 over 4. And this side just becomes the number, uh, it just becomes 2 times 3. So this is the number 6. And if I divide both sides by 2, I get 3 is what x is, right? x is the number 3. So we know x is 3. All right, moving on to the next page. There's a lot of stuff here. Oh, dear. Okay, so this one, this one I have a lot of different values of, I've got given the values of A, B, and C, and I'm asked to evaluate some expressions. So this first one, A, says that I need to take whatever A is, and I need to square that, and I need to add 11 times whatever C is. So you can see I've very neatly set up some parentheses here. Here's A. Uh, here's B, and here's C. So in the place of A, I'm going to write a negative, ooh, that's not the, that's not the wrong color pen. In the place of uh, A, I'm gonna write the number negative three. And then in the place of C, I'm gonna write a positive 10, positive 10. Well, negative three squared, that's negative three times negative three is the number nine. Ooh, and then, 11 times 10 is 110. So this is going to become plus 110. So I believe this is 119, right? So with those two values, I get 119. A bit of a challenge here to see the input values, but I, I, I need to figure out the difference between A and B. Ooh, that seems, that seems slightly difficult. Let's see. I'm going to go get rid of that. I'm going to go... Let's see, a is negative three, so I'm gonna take the number negative three. Oh, this is all, this is not working out well. I'm gonna take negative three. Oh, I think, I think I might have to stop this video and pick it up and do a part two because the pen's not, my pen's not working. Let's see, I got negative three is what a is, and then I have to subtract four, and I need to square that, plus the number one, plus 5 times C, which is the number 10. Ooh. Okay, so let's see. A is negative 3, and B is 4. So this says take A and subtract B. So that is that is negative 7. When I square negative 7, I do get the number 49. The pen is not working right there. That's interesting. 49. 49 plus 1 is 50, and then I've got 50 plus another 50, five times 10, and I get 100. So when I plug those values in to that expression, I got 100 out of it. And that's fun. Let's see, next, I've got, this is, this is kind of, this is taxing. You know, it's time to take a break after this. Let's, let's make this the last one and we'll break this off into it, part B. Um, so I've got, a plus C, okay, A is negative 3. So I've got a negative 3 plus C, which is 10. And I'm going to subtract from that 4 times A, which is a negative 3. And then plus 2 times B, and B is 4. So what do I have here? I've got 7 
Uh, that's going to be plus 12, isn't it? Because it's a negative 4 times negative 3, and then plus 8. Well, 12 and 8 is 12 and 8 is 20. So I'm looking at 27 for part C. And then finally for part D, same thing. You can see on your paper what A, B, and C are. Um, B is 4, so I've got 2 times 4 in the numerator plus C in the numerator plus 2. And then in the denominator, I've got a negative 3 minus a 2. Okay, so in the numerator, that looks like, what, 8 plus 12, which looks like the number 20 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I've got negative 5. And 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. So that one should give me negative 4. Um, let's, let's keep going. We'll finish this page. So write each of these numbers in scientific notation. Okay, so I write down 2.15. That's what it should be. But that's not what the number is. I have to multiply this by something to get it to be that. By what? By the number 10. So it's 2.15 times 10 to the first power. Mm-hmm, that is. How about this one? Well, I know I'm going to place the decimal right here, right? And I'm going to write down that this is going to be 1.62, but that's not the number I have, right? The number I have is much, much smaller. So I need to not multiply by 10, but I'm going to divide by 10 a bunch. How many times? Well, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So... I never put dividing by 10. What I do is I go 10 to the negative fifth, right? Because remember, 10 to the negative first is the same thing as 1 tenth, right? That negative exponent means I'm dividing by that, right? It's, it's uh, reciprocal. So 1.62 times 10 to the negative fifth should be the number I had. And you know what? Why not take a quick look at our calculator, friend, and see if it agrees with that? I'm not sure what this will, how this will handle this. If I go 1.62 times 10 to the power of negative 5, it should be the original decimal. And I've got 0 0.00001.62. Yeah, 0.00001.62. It's exactly the same. So I'm confident in that answer. Um, last question on this page is Skittles. Uh-oh. Skittles. Let's see. Convert 15 Skittles per day into Skittles per second. What? That's not many Skittles per second. If I'm eating only 15 in a day. So I start with I start with the quantity I have, right? I've got a quantity of, um, here we go. I've got a quantity of 15 Skittles per day. And I want to get this in per second. So first of all, my days need to go away. And I definitely know that if I've got a day in the top, that is 24 hours, not two hours. It's 24 hours. Okay. That's that's correct. Now what? Um, see, I want my I want hours to go away. So I'm going to say I got hours in the top. Okay. And I'm going to go to uh, hours, minutes, yeah, minutes. And I know that one hour is the same thing as 60 minutes. So my hours are gone. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do tack on one more here to get to seconds, right? I can say that if I've got uh, a minute, a minute, one minute is the same as 60 seconds. So again, as I write these, essentially everything that I've added here is equal to one, right? One day is the same amount of time as 24 hours. One hour is the same amount of time as 60 minutes. One minute is the same amount of time as 60 seconds. So I've got 15 Skittles per day, and I multiplied times a one, times a one, times a one. What's nice about that is because I put the, the days in my numerator, right, in this first one, and I had days in the denominator, days are gone. I, I brought hours into this numerator. They're going to be gone with these hours. And I've got uh, minutes in this numerator. It's going to be gone with these minutes. So the only units I'm left with, if you look across the whole thing, are Skittles per second. Right? So my units, my answer here is going to be Skittles. S-K-I-T-T-L-E-S per second. 
But then what's the number you say? What is the number you say? Well, it's, 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 it's a small number. In the numerator, there's a 15. And in the denominator, there's a 20 times 60 times 60. Not 20, 24. 24 times 60 times 60. If I can evaluate that, let's grab my friendly calculator. There it is. Let me hit clear. So in the numerator, I had the number 15. So a fraction with that. And in the denominator, there's a 24 times a 60 uh, times another 60. So this will work out just fine without the parentheses because I can clearly see what's in the top, what's in the bottom. And it says small number. Man, it's a small number. Oh, write your answer in scientific notation. That's fun. Okay, so the number, the answer is what? 0 0.0001737. Three six one one, geez, significant figures. Hmm. I'm just gonna go to one point seven four times ten to the negative what? I know it's ten to the negative something, right? One point seven four. I put the decimal here, and I have to. Um, what I've written down is way too big, right? One point seven four is way too big, so I know I have to divide by some tens. How many? I need to divide by 1, 2, 3, 4 tens, so times 10 to the negative fourth power. So if I take 1.74 and I divide by 10, 10, 10, and another 10, I'll get exactly the same value here. So I would say this, I don't even know, I don't even know if that would taste like a Skittle at that point. It seems so small. It's like Skittle residue or something like that. All right, there are two, oh, there's, there's a, just one more page left. All right, let's do it. I'm not that tired. I can we can do this. So let's see. It says graph each equation, identify the y-intercept and slope of each line. Oh, that's great. If I look at that first one, I can tell that my slope is one half. Right? It's got this up one over two pattern. And my y-intercept is at negative six. That's great. Because now I can graph it. So I'm just gonna come in here at negative one, two, three, four, five. This is negative six. And I'm just going to go, oh, geez, was it up one over two? Yeah, I'm going to go up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. There it is. It's beautiful. Of course, you got a ruler. You line up the ruler and you draw the line. There we go. All right, the next problem we have, that is not written in y equals mx plus b form. It's close, right? So... If I see that I've got something written in this form, I can just read off what my slope and y-intercept are, right? but it's not quite in that form. But in order to do it, all I need to do is subtract 2x from each side. If I subtract 2x from the left-hand side, it becomes y. And if I subtract 2x from the right-hand side, it becomes negative 2x. So this becomes y is equal to negative 2x plus 6. Beautiful. So now I've got... I've got this y-intercept at positive 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I've got a slope of, uh, ooh, negative 2, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So I can see that slope, right, negative 2. Line up the ruler, draw the, ooh, get back over here. Line up the ruler. Really? Really? There's people watching. That's close. Uh, and then I also know that the slope in this case is negative 2, right? Because I changed it into this form. And I know that my y-intercept is at positive 6. Sweet. Um, next, it says, what does it say? It says, write a rule, an equation that matches the graph below. So there's, there's not a typo. Well, there, there was a typo on this key. But on your test, there wasn't. This right here is supposed to be a, a negative. It's supposed to be a negative. So it's clearly in that spot, right? X is negative 5. Y is negative 7. And I can see that I have the slope. Okay. It certainly looks like it's going through negative 3, but I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about I'm going to think about the chicks down on the farm. And I know that I have a point and I have a slope, right? My slope M is up four over five and furthermore i know that i have this x value from my point of negative five 
and I have a y value for my point of negative 7. And I can write, thinking about this equation of any line except for a vertical line, y equals mx plus b, I've got a y value of negative 7, and that equals my slope 4 fifths times the value of x plus b. Well, that's nice. It almost makes a giant 1, except it's going to make it negative, right? Um, 4 fifths times negative 5 is going to be a negative 4. So this is negative 4 plus b is negative 7. What did I do? I just multiplied 4 fifths times negative 5. And then I'm going to add negative 4 to both sides. So I get negative 3 is b. Well, guess what? b is exactly what it looked like it was, right? It's exactly, it was exactly at negative 3. So the equation of this line is y is equal to 4 fifths x and then minus 3. y is equal to 4 fifths x minus 3. You know, it just, it just occurred to me that this calculator was in the way. And I, I got to remember to look up there on the screen because I apologize. You may have not seen all that. I'll just pause this pause here if you want to look at it more. But you can see basically I'm thinking down on the farm with the baby chick. This is what we did to figure out the y-intercept if we didn't know it for sure. Last question says, write at least, at least, really at least, three single-term expressions that are equivalent to um, two, two, to the, uh, 2 times x to the negative third. So I saw a lot of great ones, right? Um, people said like, oh, like you could have 18 um, over 9x to the negative third. That works. Um, maybe you had 12x to the positive third on the top over 6. That works. Right, those are those are both involving what do those involve those involve division problems right i can also write it like this i can say um let's say two times I, that is not right what i wrote neither one of those are right it's definitely late and i must be tired because this is not right um this is equal to 18 over 9x to the positive third. Oh my goodness. So that gives me a 2 in the numerator and an x to the third in the bottom. That's good. And then this should be a negative 3. What does that give me? That gives me 2. Uh, that gives me a 2x to the negative third. That's true. Boy, that's embarrassing. It's a little embarrassing. What else could I do? Well, if I have if I had x to the fifth in the top. And if I had x to the 8th in the bottom, that is x to the negative 3rd. That's true. It is. And I could also just, I could throw a 4 up here and a 2 if I wanted. But that doesn't involve multiplication, does it? You know what? I can change it and cheat. I can say, sure. Sure it does. That's multiplication. You've got a fraction times a fraction. But that is the same because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And if I've got x to the 5th in the top and x to the 8th in the bottom, that is x to the 3 in the bottom, right, x to the th third power in the bottom, which is the same as x to the negative third up in the numer numerator. Oh, word salad, word salad. All right, everyone, please, you, you've you earned a break, right? Close your mind for a minute. Um, do something goofy like chill out on, I don't know what kids do, watch the TikTok for, but hey, but don't do it for more than like five minutes because you could lose yourself doing that TikTok thing. And uh, I'll see you in class soon. Take care.